Let's look now at the service and talk about internal rotation and the serve. You can see from this image that the person's leg drive has finished. I want you to look at the hips. Notice how the hips are angled so that the back hip moves vertically upwards and doesn't move horizontally around. This enables then with the appropriate backswing for the racket to move into external rotation. When it nears completion of external rotation at the shoulder, we have an eccentric contraction of the internal rotators, a key aspect of how the tennis serve works. You can then see the person moves from maximum external rotation at the shoulder through to internal rotation. And here, there's a concentric contraction of the internal rotators. Later in the talk, I'll talk about joint power and how you can actually get free energy from this type of service action. Let me ask you a question. What percentage do you think internal rotation plays in racket speed or racket velocity at impact in the mature service action? No percent, and that's possible. 20%, 40%, as much as 60%. Have a look at the images below and you can see that internal rotation occurs in both the 15-year-old serve and that of Roger Federer. The answer is about 40%. Now, this is going to vary clearly from person to person, but research has shown that it will provide about 40% of racket velocity at impact if you use internal rotation. So you can imagine if you take internal rotation out of the surface action, where do you find this extra 40%? Some people can try and develop it in other ways, but typically this will lead to misuse and overuse injuries. You can see that the 15 year old boy also has the correct service action for his age. And he probably at 15 would be starting to get about 40% of his racket velocity at impact from internal rotation. If you look at the actions of the two, this is a 15 year old versus a mature professional. Again, look at that back hip. Look how the back hip moves vertically upwards. Both hips are driven up from leg drive, but the back hip moves up higher. In other words, with higher velocity, that's vertical velocity and the front here. So you stay almost side on for much of the action until you get near impact. And it's only then that you start to move horizontally with your trunk into the ball. This is the only way that you can effectively use internal rotation to create velocity. So let's look at male versus females. It's always an interesting question. It's one that Jackie and I talk about quite consistently. If you look at the fastest serve that's been recorded on the ATP or WTA circuits, and you can see the two numbers there in kilometers per hour, the difference between the two is about 18%. So this is the fastest that's ever been recorded in an official match. If you then look at a typical Grand Slam tournament, what I've done is taken the Australian Open, and I've looked at data from the Australian Open, and males typically are in the 190, 195 kilometer per hour range. Females are about 165 to 170. There's clearly females that serve higher in velocity than some males, but generally the continuum works to this level. And again, the difference is about 14%. So it's not that different to that which you'd record from the higher speed recorder. Do you think this is a strength, pure strength issue, or is it more related to perhaps the, the greater stature of male players in terms of their labor length? I think there's, there's three things. Um, one is certainly strength. Two is certainly stature. And the third actually is technique. And further to the question of technique, Jackie, the next slide helps give more clarity to how this works. You can see here, we have data collected for males and females, and now these are professional tennis players. The females were all Australians, and we recorded the data ourselves at the IAS. 
The males are a collection of data across a number of research studies. So it's not really comparing um, an apple with an apple, but it's very close. So if you look here at internal rotation velocity, in other words, this is peak internal rotation velocity for male and female professional players. You can see the males are typically higher than the females. The 17% difference does make a difference. And it reflects the same level of difference that we saw before. In other words, if we look at the highest velocity ever recorded, if we looked at the average velocity at a Grand Slam tournament, and now we're looking at the difference in velocity, this is shoulder internal rotation velocity of the two groups. Again, about 15% different. So this is what we really should use, if you like, as a rule of thumb. There's about 15% difference between the two. So the take home message on this is that if females want to serve harder, with higher velocity, then they really need to work on their internal rotation. That's the technique of internal rotation. I fully accept that the strength levels, the stature will also make a difference, but it's a way of making the difference smaller. And that's certainly the case that there are a number of females that serve with higher velocities than some of the males on the circuit. We're just generally talking about a way of improving one's service velocity. Lovely study done recently in Spain compared Spanish youth. And the idea here was to look at internal rotation across the development pathway. So we're looking at internal rotation strength and service velocity for Spanish 13 year olds and for Spanish 15 year olds, males and females in both categories. So if we compare these, it's interesting that prior to puberty, in the under 13 group, there was no significant difference in their internal rotation strength, nor was there any difference in their serving velocity. So prior to puberty, in the under 13 group, they were as one, males and females were as one group. Now then as we moved to 15 and compared that group with the 15 year old group, now I accept they're not the same players, they're a different cohort of 15 year olds. We now find two things. We find that service velocity increases for both sexes. So in other words, the girls and the boys are higher in their service velocity than the under 13 cohort. And now we have a difference between the males and the females. The under 15 boys serve at a higher velocity and have greater internal rotation strength. So what's our take home message from this? Two things. Prior to puberty, we should work on technique. What we say to coaches is that get technique such that the feet are in the right location, the trunk is rotating in the right directions around the right axis, that the movement of the racket and arm are such that you will allow increases in velocity to naturally occur once puberty occurs. In other words, once you move through puberty, these things will change naturally. Secondly, if we want girls, these are the 15 or under 15 year old girls to serve with a higher velocity, then we should address internal rotation as a selected aspect of tennis development. In other words, don't forget that this is the power generator in the serve. You as a coach, must deliver and must work on these types of action. The final slide, looking at internal rotation, considers energy. And I talked before about eccentric and concentric contraction about the shoulder for the internal rotators. This is a joint power study. Now, if you look to the two images, I fully accept these are both retired Grand Slam champions. But if you can watch what you if you can look at what you can see in the pictures, you see that they are in a position of external rotation at the shoulder, ready to move into internal rotation. Research has shown that if you look at a, at a group of players, and these were high performance players, not professionals, that the joint power 
at maximum external rotation was negative. And you can see it's negative 220. So what has happened here is you have the arm moving backwards into external rotation at the same time near the completion of external rotation that the internal rotators switch on. In other words, the internal rotation torque is pushing forward while the arm is moving backwards. In other words, you get a negative joint power, an eccentric contraction, a storage of energy. I've described this as free energy. If you move from there to from external rotation then into internal rotation towards impact, you can see the number there. This is a concentric contraction. So you have the torque, the internal rotator torque that is, and the joint angular velocity being in the same direction. Then you can see it's a very large power value. So for those that in actual fact wish to serve with a high velocity, it is imperative that we get this free energy we use the joint power both at the completion of external rotation and then move this into the concentric traction of internal rotation.